Steel types are like the brick walls of the Pokemon world, but most of the early form steel Pokemon are pretty darn terrible. With hardcore Nuzlocke rules in place to make the challenge infinitely harder, can our team of unyielding steel companions conquer the challenges of Pokemon Scarlet? Well, probably not. You see, the first opponent I'm up against is Katie, the bug leader, and because none of the starters are steel type, I'll just have to settle for the cute little cat. But while he is cute, this does also mean that our rival Nimona will get access to the part fighting type Quoqueval, and director Clavel gets the fire type Skeledurge later on. This little cat is already causing me problems. So with no viable starter, this leaves me with only a... Yeesh. This little baby might get pretty buff later on, but for now, it's, well, just a baby. But with Iron Maiden and the Tinkatink on our team, we can at least officially start the challenge. Next up, I also run into a Bronzor. This floating frisbee might look a bit silly, but he does get access to Reflect and Light Screen, which paired with the Light Clay item will give us a major advantage in not just this battle, but many more. I name it Metallica, and it does have the ability Heat Proof. Not gonna lie, I was kinda hoping for Levitate, but having something to counter fire types isn't all that bad either. And so, it was finally time to face off against Katie and her bug types. I start off as planned by setting up Reflect. Her nimble really can't do as much damage, so I decide I might as well set up Stealth Rock at this point. On the next turn, I switch into Iron Maiden, who, thanks to the Reflect, takes almost no damage. I go for Metal Claw in hopes of lucking out and getting an attack boost, but the opposite happens as I miss my hit. Well, not to worry, because Iron Maiden has no problem taking any of Nimble's attacks and can take it out using a couple more Metal Claws. Still no attack boost in sight though. Come on RNG gods, help me out here! Next out is Tarantula, who takes a good chunk of damage to the Stealth Rocks, but unfortunately for us, Reflect does wear off on this turn. I decide to switch back into Metallica to set it up again, but to my horror, Tarantula deals a surprising amount of damage with two super effective assurances. With Reflect up and running again, I decide to switch back into Iron Maiden, who can finally take down the Tarantula. Finally, Katie's ace, Teddy Ursa, comes out. She terrastalizes it, but since my hardcore Nuzlocke rules prevent me from doing the same, I'm at a massive disadvantage. We do get a little bit lucky though, as she does miss her Fury Swept attack. Metal Claw deals decent damage, while her Fury Cutter attack does pretty much nothing to us. And so, a final Metal Claw earns us our first gem badge. Phew! Does that mean we can finally get some more encounters now? No? Aw, sh- Next up is the first Titan battle against Claw. Thankfully, the type matchup is in our favor. Since the strategy worked so well last battle, I decide to set up Reflect again, as well as confuse the Cliff Titan using Confuse Ray, because maybe I can get a little lucky here and there. Nah, who am I kidding? But after a few Gyro Balls, Cliff's ability Anger Shell does activate, meaning his attack increases and defense decreases. This surprisingly works in our favor, as through some stroke of luck, the Titan hits itself in confusion, dealing loads of damage to itself. It only takes one more gyro ball to finish off the first titan stage. On the next stage, we can use a similar strategy, and together with Arvin's help, defeating Cloth is barely a challenge. After destroying Cloth, our trusty Metallica surpassed the level cap. Unfortunately, this means I have to temporarily bench Metallica. But don't worry, we've got a plan to make up for the loss. Because we were so awesome and totally carried Arvin through that battle, he makes a sandwich which I feed to Karaidon. Thanks to this, we get access to a new area where I can catch a Riolu. Welcome to the team, Black Sabbath. Now, Riolu isn't a steel type yet, but we'll work on that. For now, I'm still stuck with just one Pokemon. Now, here comes the real challenge. I'm heading to Brassius' grass type gym with just one Pokemon, Iron Maiden. It's going to be seriously difficult, but I have faith in our little girl. Before we face Brassius though, I make a pit stop at Cascarafa to obtain one of the best items in the game, the leftovers. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the battle against Brassius. He starts by sending out his Petalil, who immediately puts us to sleep. Not an ideal start, considering we only have one Pokemon on the team. Thankfully, our leftovers help keep us healthy, and we manage to take down the Petalil without losing too much health. Next up is Brassius' Smala. In a stroke of luck, we land a critical hit with Metal Claw, boosting Iron Maiden's attack. 
This means we can easily take out Smoliv on the next turn. But now, it's time for Brassius' ace Pokemon, the terrestrialized Pseudo Wudo. Pseudo Wudo starts with Trailblaze, so we will not be outspeeding it after this. Despite our attack boost, Metal Claw does minimal damage, so I opt for Draining Kiss, targeting Pseudo Wudo's weaker special defense. It's still a tough battle, back and forth between Pseudo Wudo's Trailblaze and our Draining Kiss. It could have gone either way, but after some more back and forth, we managed to land the finishing blow, defeating Brassius and earning our second gem badge. As we move forward with the challenge, things are about to to get a lot more difficult. And as great as they've been so far, the Pokemon we currently have will not cut it anymore. So it was time to make some changes. First, I decide to bring back Black Sabbath, Ariolo. I've missed this little guy. We spend some quality time together until he finally evolves into a super strong Lucario. And the best part, he's now a Steel type. But that's not all. I also catch a Gimme Ghoul who I named Slipknot. However, since it's not a Steel type yet, it'll have to wait in the box for now. We'll come back to Slipknot when the time is right. With our unyielding steel team stronger than ever, it was time to face the next titan, Bombardier. I decide to start with Metallica, and to play it safe, I have Metallica set up Reflect just in case. Then I make a strategic switch to Iron Maiden, and thanks to our type advantage and the protection from Reflect, Bombardier's attacks barely dent us, and our draining kiss does respectable damage in return. We continue to trade blows, but this could only really end in one way. Round 1 ends in a victory for us. We enter the second round against the Titan, this time with Arvin. And why change a winning game? So just like last time, I set up Reflect and switch into Iron Maiden. This plays out much like the previous round, ending in another resounding victory for us. After that, there's not much else to do but to challenge the next team star boss, Giacomo. He's a dark type user, so we've got a dang good matchup. I lead with Black Sabbath, who easily takes out Giacomo's Ponyard with a quad effective Aura Sphere. And Black Sabbath is such a chad that it takes just three Aura Spheres to defeat Giacomo's Starmobile, securing us the win. At this point, it's worth noting that this is the very first time I'm playing this game, and I'm doing this fairly blindly. That said, I have heard that the next gem is one of the the toughest in the game from people who have Nuzlocke Scarlet before, and so I want to make absolutely sure we're ready for the challenge. So it's time to suck up on some new teammates. First off, I catch a Varum that I name Motorhead. This speedy addition will definitely come in handy. Next, I stumbled upon a Qfint, and without hesitation, I name it Slayer, because that's what it'll be used for. With an impressive attack stat, Slayer is a force to be reckoned with. And last but not least, I catch a Ponyard, and decide to name this little guy Pantera. While Pantera might be a bit weak right now, I have a feeling he'll evolve into quite the beast later on. With this trio of new companions, our team is looking more robust than ever, so it's time I made it to Lavincia to challenge the gym. Oh, Nimona. Hi. Wait, I'm not ready for a battle. Well, shit. Nimona sends out her Rockruff, so having Metallica in the lead isn't so bad after all. Rockruff's bite attack manages to do some decent damage, so I decide to play it safe and have Metallica set up Reflect to boost her defense. I also manage to set up Stealth Rock before I finally bring out the big guns. Black Sabbath, our Chad Lucario. With a single Aura Spear, Black Sabbath makes quick work of Nimona's Rockruff. That's one down. Next up is Palmy, but once again, another Aura Sphere does the trick. Black Sabbath is just an absolute powerhouse, but the real challenge is yet to come. Nimona sends out her Terrestrialized Quaxwell, and she starts setting up with Worka, increasing her attack stats. This could be trouble, but thankfully I managed to subdue the Quaxwell before any significant damage is done. Black Sabbath carries us to victory once again. This battle may have been a breeze, but I've got a feeling we need to be on the lookout for surprise Nimona battles in the future. It might not be as easy next time. Anyway, this win also earns Iron Maiden enough XP to evolve into Tinkatuff. So, with everything ready and prepared, I finally take on Electric-type gym leader Iono. I lead with Metallica as Iono sends out her Wattrell. We start the battle by setting up Stealth Rock, and Wattrell's spark doesn't do too much damage. But to play it safe, I have Metallica use Reflect to bolster our defense. Metallica isn't exactly a damage-dealing machine, so I decide to switch to Slayer. One Rock Tomb is all it takes to knock out Wattrell. Next in line is Belly Bolt. Our Bulldoze packs a punch 
and Belly Bolt's water gun doesn't phase us much. One more bulldoze and Belly Bolt bites the dust. Iono sends out Luxio, and it's time to bring Metallica back into the action, even though it's still paralyzed. Here's where I get a bit risky. Luxio does have bite, but I figure if it doesn't crit, we should be okay. I opt to set up light screen to prepare for her ace, Miss Magius, and we survive the bite attack. Now all we have to do is bypass the paralysis, but luck isn't on our side this time. Metallica is fully paralyzed and my risky move doesn't pay off. With no other choice, I switch to Black Sabbath, who takes Luxio down with just one dig attack. Finally, Iono sends out her ace, Miss Magius, who she then terrestrializes. She lands a Confuse Ray, so now it's a matter of luck. Thankfully, I hit an Aura Sphere, dealing about half of Miss Magius' health. Then I make a couple of questionable plays, switching between Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath. At this point, it's anyone's guess what I was thinking. Miss Magius hits us with a charge beam, but thankfully it doesn't get the special attack boost. I switch back to Black Sabbath, who can tank a hex attack, but gets confused in the process. And this time, we're not so lucky as Black Sabbath hits himself in confusion. On the next turn though, Miss Magius lands another charge beam and gets the boost. It all comes down to this. Will Black Sabbath hit himself in confusion and potentially put us in serious danger? Or will we land our attack and secure the win? The suspense is real. But to my absolute delight, we actually land our attack. Black Sabbath takes down Iono's Miss Magius and we emerge victorious from this shocking battle. After defeating Iono and earning our third gym badge, I realize I've had enough of close calls. No more. It's time to unleash the beast. So I go goblin mode and embark on a quest to fill my goblin sack with 999 gimme ghoul coins. And with the sack of gold filled, it was time for Slipknot to evolve into a golden go. Having it on the team is a total game changer, which is a good thing because the next challenge we have to face is not just any team star boss. It's a fire type team star boss. And last time I checked, steel types aren't exactly a great matchup against fire types. To survive a battle like this, I I knew I had to prepare, so I acquired the TM for Earthquake and Rain Dance, which hopefully will help mitigate some of our disadvantages. With that, we challenge Team Star Boss Mela, who leads with her Torkoal, setting up Harsh Sunlight. Now this could be bad news, but I've got a plan. I lead with Metallica, and thanks to its heat proof ability, we can actually take her hits quite well. My first move is to set up Reflect and Light Screen to bolster our defenses, where after I switch to Motorhead. Despite the Reflect, a flame wheel from Torkoal deals massive damage due to the harsh sunlight, making me a bit uncertain about my strategy after all. But hey, I'm this far already, so why not commit? I press Rain Dance, and thankfully, this move means we can survive the next flame wheel. Although, it could have gone really bad had she landed a critical hit. With the weather changed and rain pouring down, I switch into Slipknot, who now is able to tank Mela's hits fairly well. Slipknot does get burned, but thankfully, it's a special attacker and so a few power gem attacks are enough to take out Torko. Next up is the Starmobile, but with the weather conditions, light screen and reflect all still active, it's just a matter of time before we've taken out the Starmobile and defeated Mela. After this victory, the next step is to challenge the water type gem leader Kofu. Wait, aren't we forgetting something important? Oh, right. Now we can take on Kofu. Kofu leads with a Veluza and I send out Slipknot. One stab boosted Hex is all it takes to take on Veluza. Next up is Wugtrio, but Slipknot is out for blood because a single Thunderbolt takes down Wugtrio. Finally, Kofu sends out his Terastalized Crabominable. Thunderbolt isn't quite enough to finish it off, but it does deal good damage. His Crab Hammer attack lands a solid hit, but we outspeed him on the next turn and deliver the final blow with another Thunderbolt. At this point, it feels like nothing can stop us. Or can it? After crushing Kofu, we can finally get our hands on our next encounter, a Pineco that I named Dream Theater. And not long after, Dream Theater evolves into a Fortress. But that's not the only evolution we've been waiting for. Metallica 
that our trusty Bronzor finally evolves into a formidable Bronzong. And with Dream Theater and our evolved Metallica in our lineup, we are now fully prepared to take on the next team star challenge against Atticus. I lead with Black Sabbath, and with an earthquake, we deal massive damage to Atticus's Skun Tank. It's not long before the Skun Tank goes down, and we're off to a great start. Next in line is Atticus's Reverum. I don't consider it a real threat, so I decide to stay in. Big mistake. One Bulldoze leaves Black Sabbath with just 11 HP. I don't like playing risky with one of our best teammates, but at least we managed to take out the Reverum with a single Earthquake attack. Atticus sends out Muck next, so I switch out Black Sabbath for Metallica. I set up Light Screen before dealing some good damage with Zen Headbutt. I then switch Pokemon again, this time bringing in Slayer. Due to accuracy drop from Muck's Mud Slap attack, Slayer just can't seem to land a hit. Ah, gotta love such exciting gameplay. Finally, after way too many misses, we finally connect with a Bulldoze, taking out the Muck. It's then time to face the Starmobile. I switch back into Metallica as Light Screen wears off. The Starmobile does have Flame Charge, but Metallica's heat proof ability comes in clutch once again, allowing us to take its hits pretty well. We get off some good damage with Zen Headbutt. It gets pretty close as Metallica is left with just 14 HP, but Metallica, the champ that it is, pulls through and finishes off the Starmobile, earning us the win. After another win, Slayer, who hasn't really gotten too much spotlight yet, finally becomes useful as he evolves into a Kaparaja, who I'm just now realizing shouldn't actually be a steel type, as his name clearly suggests he's made out of copper. But I'm not complaining. We're gonna need all the help we can get since next up is yet another gym battle against none other than Larry. We challenge the normal type gym leader, who could definitely use a posture check. Larry leads with a Komala as we send out Black Sabbath. One Aura Sphere nearly takes out the Komala, but it throws a curveball with Yawn, making me decide to switch into Slipknot. With Slipknot in the spotlight, a Flash Cannon does the trick, and next out is Da Dunsparce. I play it safe and pivot into Dream Theater, who immediately gets paralyzed by a Glare Attack. No worries though, we set up Stealth Rock while we're at it, and use Body Press to deal respectable damage. Finally, one more Body Press finally takes out the Dadun Sparse. Now it's time for Larry's ace, Staraptor. I switch into Slipknot, and Staraptor can barely scratch us. Two flash cannons are more than enough to seal the deal, earning us a fairly easy win and our fifth gym badge. Victory is ours! As we walk out of the gym, our rival Nimona appears out of thin air and wants to battle, and in typical twig fashion, I am not prepared one bit. Nimona leads with Lycan Rock, but with just a single Aura Sphere, Black Sabbath takes it out effortlessly. Next up is Pomo, and once again, Black Sabbath proves unstoppable with an earthquake one-shot. Now it's Gumi's turn, but this little blob of goo can't do much against the Chad Black Sabbath. But then, Nemona sends out her now fully evolved terastalized Quaquaval. This could spell trouble, but Black Sabbath is still at over half health, so I decide to stay in. This turns out to be the biggest mistake I I've made so far. Quaquaval uses Aqua Step, and to my horror, Black Sabbath goes down. Our formidable team member who's carried us through the journey is now gone. Rest in peace, Black Sabbath, you've earned it. It's time to avenge our fallen friend, so I send out Metallica. At this point, it just randomly starts raining. What luck! But nothing can deter our hunger for vengeance. Metallica sets up Reflect and then deals decent damage with Zen Headbutt. Then I send out Dream Theater due to its massive defense. He's able to tank Quaquaval's hits pretty well. That is, until we flinch and take a critical hit. Luck really isn't on our side, huh? I switch into Slipknot next. Aqua Step does fairly low damage, and with a Thunderbolt, I finally manage to take down that godforsaken duck. You've made things painfully personal, Nimona. I will have your head if it's the last thing I do. After losing what was probably our strongest team member, I realized that we needed some upgrades to keep our challenge from being in jeopardy, so I decided to bring back Motorhead, our trusty Varum, onto the team. I put in some work training Motorhead, and finally, he evolves into a Reverum. 
This fast boy is going to be a great addition to our team. But the upgrades don't stop there. As I'm training Motorhead, Iron Maiden also gains enough experience to evolve into a little girl with a big freaking hammer. Our team is looking more formidable than ever, but will these new upgrades be enough to fill the gaping void left by our beloved Black Sabbath? Well, we don't really have a choice. The only thing we can do is challenge the next gym leader, Rhyme. This one's a double battle, where she sends out Mimikyu and Binette. I respond with my two trusty tanks, Dream Theater and Metallica. We start by setting up Reflect and Stealth Rock, ensuring we're well protected. Then I make a switch, swapping Dream Theater out for Motorhead and unleash Gyro Ball to get rid of Mimikyu's disguise. There is a twist to this battle though. The audience's cheers grant us stat boosts. We get an attack boost, turning the tide in our favor. On the next turn, Assurance easily takes out Binette and I'm able to set up a light screen for added protection. Houndstone steps up to the plate, but with our attack and special attack boosted, Motorhead nearly obliterates it in one hit. The opposing Pokemon can barely scratch us, allowing me to take on Mimikyu on the next turn. Finally, Ryan sends out her ace, Toxtricity, who she terrestrializes. But in the meantime, we also get to witness a glimpse of one of the cutest things in Pokemon history, a Grievard busting some sick moves. Anyway, with our boosted stats, we target down Toxtricity, taking it out before it can pose a serious threat. Only her Houndstone remains, and with one last draining kiss, we secure the victory and earn our sixth gym badge. With no time to lose, I make my way to Asado Desert to face the Titan Pokemon Great Tusk. Iron Maiden takes the lead, dealing substantial damage with a draining kiss. A powerful brick break from Great Tusk puts us in a tight spot, but we retaliate with another draining kiss, dealing significant damage and restoring our health. Despite the danger, I decide to keep Iron Maiden in the battle. Even though a close call brick break almost takes us down, we manage to defeat the Great Tusk with one final draining kiss. But we can't celebrate just yet. This was only the first round. We go into the next round together with Arvin. Unfortunately, his skill villain is barely of any help as it nearly faints to a single stomping tantrum attack. On top of that, our damage output is subpar. Thankfully, we do get a little lucky as we land a critical hit. But the Titan strikes back with a powerful blow against Iron Maiden, forcing me to switch into Metallica on the next turn. Metallica gets struck with a strong knockoff, but despite the setback, I'm confident that Zen Headbutt should finish the job. But of course, it misses. Just our luck. With few other choices, I switch to Dream Theater. He's able to tank some hits, but struggles to deal any significant damage. At this point, Dream Theater has about a third of his health left, and believing he could survive another hit, I make a tragic miscalculation. Great Tusk delivers a devastating stun. And just like that, we lose a dear friend. I had to avenge Dream Theater, and so I do what I should have done much earlier. I send out Slipknot to finish the job and bring justice to our fallen friend and win the battle. After sadly losing Dream Theater, we had to get back on our feet and catch some new allies. And so I head to the outskirts of Lavincia, where I catch a Corvusquire that I name Megadeth. Megadeth then evolves into a Corviknight, becoming not only viable for our team, but also an excellent answer to those pesky ground types that have given us enough trouble. And with that, I make my way to Alfrenada to take on the next gym. But on my way, I stumble upon a very cool shiny Marie. Unfortunately, it's not a steel type. So you know what we had to do. Finally, we arrive at Alfrenada, where our rival Nimona once again wants to battle. This time though, I was actually prepared for this. I know, how crazy is that? She leads with her Lycanroc as always, and to make matters worse, she scores a critical hit right off the bat, dealing a hefty amount of damage. Metallica sets up Reflect to mitigate some of the damage, and on the following turn, we nearly take out the Lycanroc with a single Gyro Ball. Metallica endures a few more 
crunch attacks before finally taking out the Lycanroc with one last gyro ball. Next up is Palmot, and so I switch to Slayer. Being the annoying little pest that she is, Nemona uses Thunder Wave to paralyze Slayer. This is not enough to stop us though, as one bulldoze is enough to take out Palmot. Next up is Sligoo, but this thing is still incredibly weak, so I take the opportunity to send Metallica back into the fray. Metallica, though low on health, can handle Sligoo's feeble attacks, and we can set up another reflect before we switch to Slipknot. We then easily deal with Sligoo, and so it's finally time to confront the bane of our existence. The godforsaken duck shows his ugly mutt on the battlefield. Thanks to Reflect, Slipknot can withstand its blows and retaliate with a Thunderbolt, tearing the Quaquaval to shreds. Sweet, sweet revenge. Having gotten justice, we set our sights on the 7th gym leader. It was time to challenge the psychic type leader, Tulip. She starts off with her Farograph, and I've decided to lead with Slayer. With a couple of Iron Heads, Slayer takes care of the giraffe with ease. Next is Espathra, but Slayer continues to live up to his name and dispatches it without breaking a sweat. Gardevoir enters the battlefield, and so Metallica steps in to set up Light Screen. Metallica strikes with Gyro Ball, dealing respectable damage, but I still decide to then switch to Motorhead. Using Iron Head, Motorhead easily finishes off Gardevoir. Finally, Tulip's ace, her floor jets, comes onto the battlefield. Though she terrestrializes it, it's not enough to stop Motorhead. With just a few more Iron Heads, we take down the floor jets and claim our seventh gym batch. Having a good battle streak going on, I decide to challenge the eighth gym leader, Grusha, right away. She's an ice type user, so we should have the advantage, but as we've learned the hard way, anything can happen. She leads with her Frost Moth, but Slip Knot is easily able to squash the Icy Bug with a single Power Gem. Beartick is up next, who most likely will go for an Earthquake, so I switch to Megadeth to avoid any damage. Megadeth uses Steel Wind, dealing significant damage, and in no time, Beartick is out for the count. Grusha Satitan is out next, but I decide to stay the course with Megadeth. We land another solid blow with Steel Wing before I switch to Metallica. In order to prepare for Grusha's ace, her Altaria, I decide to set up Light Screen just in case. Using Gyro Ball, Metallica chips away at Titan's health. Finally, Altaria comes out, but she can't do much, and it's not long before we've defeated the final gym leader. Now, with eight gym badges in hand, we've collected all the Paldea badges and solidified our place as a steel solid trainer. But our journey is far from over, as I set my sights on the next team's star boss, Ortega. This kid is a fairy type user, which is a seemingly advantageous matchup for us. However, as our friend Mr. Oppenheimer wisely noted, theory can only get you so far. Anyway, Ortega leads with Azumarill and we lead with Slayer. Ironhead connects, but doesn't seal the deal. I decide to switch tactics and send out Metallica. Aqua Tail takes a surprisingly significant chunk of Metallica's health, but at least we managed to set up Reflect before swapping in Slipknot. Slipknot takes out Azumarill with a well-placed Thunderbolt, and so Ortega sends out Daxbun, who happens to be my favorite Gen 9 Pokemon. I switch to Iron Maiden, who's able to take out the Daxbun with two Gigaton Hammers. A bittersweet feeling for sure. Wigglytuff is next in line, so I decide to switch in Motorhead. Unfortunately, Wigglytuff lands a paralyzing stomp, but that doesn't deter us. On the next turn, Motorhead breaks through paralysis and takes down Wigglytuff with an Iron Head. With just the Starmobile left, we know we have this in the bag. I opt to play it safe though, and switch to Iron Maiden to finish the job. The Starmobile can't deal much damage to us, and so Iron Head does the trick, sealing our victory. With Ortega defeated, we have just one more Team Star battle to go, but this time we're up against Airy, a fighting type user who may look like a My Little Pony, but is anything but cute or cuddly. This is gonna be a challenge. Airy starts off with Toxicroak, and I send up Metallica, being the perfect counter. A single Zen headbutt is easily enough to take down Toxicroak. 
Lucario steps up next, so I switch to Slayer. Horus Spear lands, dealing a significant blow to Slayer, but we retaliate with an earthquake that absolutely shatters Ares Lucario. Passemian is next, so I respond by sending out Slipknot to deal with it. Slipknot now knows Psychic, which is a good thing because it's easily enough to take out the Passemian in a single hit. Ari then sends out her Annihilate, which would be a very scary foe, but I've devised a plan. I send in Metallica, baiting out a fire punch that barely phases us thanks to Heatproof. I then take the opportunity to set up Reflect before switching into Megadeth. I can then set up Tailwind, gaining the speed advantage. Annihilate strikes back with close combat, causing some damage, but also lowering its defensive stats, which conveniently sets the stage for a finishing grill pack. Now Ares left with her Starmobile, so playing it safe, I send in Slipknot. The Starmobile uses shift gear, which could potentially cause some serious issues for us. Psychic deals decent damage, but the Starmobile insists on increasing its stats. I'm ready for a huge hit any second now. But I'm left completely dumbfounded as the Starmobile goes for another shift gear despite being on low health. With a final psychic, we take out the Starmobile and win the battle. And that's all the Team Star bosses defeated. For now at least. Having beat Eri, we have some challenging battles ahead of us. To rise to the occasion, I decided to bring Pantera back onto the team. I first evolved Pantera into a Bisharp, and then into an absolute powerhouse, a King Gambit. With a base stat total of 550, Pantera is not here to fool around. I then ascend Mount Glaciado and manage to catch a Magneton, naming it Judas Priest. Unfortunately, we can't evolve it since I don't have access to trading. But that's not a problem, because I then get my hands on an Eviolite, which boosts Judas Priest's defense and special defense by a whopping 50%. And with these new additions, I felt ready to take on the final Titan Pokemon. Tatsugiri. But first, we must contend with the big boy Dondazo. I start off with Metallica, immediately setting up Reflect and Light Screen. The Dondazo makes its move, but its attacks barely leave a scratch. With that, I switch to Judas Priest. A single Thunderbolt is all it takes to dispatch the first Dondazo. That's round one down. We follow the big boy to the next location, where round two commences. Arvin joins the fray, but as per usual, doesn't really contribute much. This time, we employ the same strategy. Metallica puts up light screen and reflect. Then, I send out Judas Priest, who uses Thunderbolt, dealing massive damage to the Dondazo. One more Thunderbolt does the trick, and so we're on to the last part of this battle. Facing Tatsugiri, we stick to our proven method, relying on Metallica to set up light screen. Once it's in place, we call in Judas Priest, who uses Thunderbolt to deal some pretty good damage. We continue to whittle down the Tatsugiri, and since it can't do much back, it's just a matter of time before we're able to finish off the Sushi, meaning we've successfully beaten all Titans in Paldea. And with that, we set our sights on the Pokemon League. The team I decided to bring consists of our trusty tank, Metallica the Bronzong, Pantera the King Gambit, Iron Maiden the the Tinkaton, Slayer the Kaparaja, Slipknot the Golden Go, and Megadeth the Corviknight. As we step into the Pokemon League, our first challenge awaits in the form of Rika. She leads with Whiskash, and we counter with Metallica. As is tradition in this run, we set up Light Screen to shield us from Whiskash's special moves. Because of that, the otherwise dangerous Earth Power barely hurts us. I then switch to Megadeth in order to set up Tailwind. With the stage set, I bring in Pantera who easily finishes off Whiskash with a Kowtow Cleave. Out next is Camerupt, and its fire ground typing could be potential trouble. Despite this, I choose to stay in with Pantera, and a Kowtow Cleave nearly obliterates Camerupt in one hit. Pantera does get hit with Yawn, so I decide I might as well switch back to Metallica again. With Metallica out, I can once again set up Light Screen and then switch to Slayer. I get seriously unlucky, as Camerupt lands a critical Critical hit Earth Power, which does massive damage since it bypasses our light screen. However, I choose to stay in anyway, and Slayer takes down Camerupt with an Earthquake on the next turn. Rika sends out Donphan next, and I opt for a switch to Megadeth to dodge an incoming Earthquake. 
Drill Peck inflicts decent damage, and despite a critical hit Stone Edge from Donphan, Megadeth takes fairly little damage. It's only a matter of time before we can take out Donphan as well. Next up is Doug Trio, so I use U-Turn, switching into Pantera. One more Kowtow Cleave is all it takes to deal with Doug Trio. Rika is now down to her ace, Claude Sire, which she terrestrializes. Pantera deals major damage with Kowtow Cleave, but so so does Claude Sire's Earthquake. Luckily, we outspeed her Claude Sire on the next turn and secure victory with a final Kowtow Klee. That's the first Elite Four dealt with. Next up is Poppy, a battle that will determine who the true Steel Master is. Poppy kicks off the showdown with her Kuparaja, and I respond by sending up Metallica. Without wasting any time, we set up Light Screen and Reflect. With everything set, we switch to our own Kuparaja, Slayer. Poppy's attacks barely leave a dent, and with a single earthquake, Slayer destroys the opposing Kuparaja. Next, Poppy sends out her own Bronzong, and I'm realizing she just copy pasted in my team. An earthquake from her Bronzong does alarming damage. To avoid risking Slayer, I switch to Slipknot. Slipknot handles the earthquake quite well and retaliates with a critical Thunderbolt that nearly knocks out Puppy's Bronzong. With one more Thunderbolt, her Bronzong is no more. Now, Puppy sends out her Magnezone, and with no better counter, I decide to let Slipknot stay in battle. Thunderbolt does a little bit of damage, chipping away at Magnezone's health. We also use Recover to undo the damage that Magnezone dealt us. Ultimately, I choose to switch to Pantera after all. However, Magnezone's discharge turns out to be unexpectedly devastating, and it even leaves Pantera paralyzed. Thankfully, a strong Kowtow Cleaves leaves Magnezone with just a little bit of health left. I then decide to send back Slipknot into the battle, and use Recover to regain health. With little health left, a final Thunderbolt is enough to get rid of Magnezone once and for all. Now, Poppy sends out her Corviknight. I decide to stay in with Slipknot, dealing good damage with Thunderbolt. Corviknight can't do much damage back to us, and it doesn't take long for Slipknot to take down Corviknight. Finally, Poppy reveals her ace, Tinkaton. She terrestrializes it, but even then, Gigaton Hammer doesn't do as much damage. A few Thunderbolts later, and Tinkaton is down for the count, earning us a win against the second member of the Elite Four. Next up, we face Larry, this time as a member of the Elite Four and a flying type specialist. His Tropius takes the lead, and I respond with Megadeth. Tropius is no match for a super effective drill pack taking him out in a single hit. Larry then sends out Altaria, so I decide to stay in with Megadeth. Steelwing does decent damage, however, I decide it might be best to switch out after all, using a U-turn to bring back Metallica into the battle instead. We get a little unlucky here, as Altaria lands a flamethrower that leaves us with a burn. It's not all too bad though, as we can still set up a light screen and then swap out. I send out Iron Maiden, who can easily take a flamethrower thanks to the light screen. With a single play rough, Iron Maiden makes quick work of the Altaria. Larry Staraptor is next, but one more Gigaton Hammer almost takes it out in one hit. And on the next turn, Iron Maiden can easily finish off Staraptor. Oracorio is Larry's next Pokemon, so I decide to stay in and use Protect to recover some health via leftovers. Play Rough does about half damage, and so Oracorio goes down after just two hits. Finally, Larry is down to his ace, Flamigo, which he of course terrestrializes. Iron Maiden stays in, and Gigaton Hammer once again deals massive damage. But Flamigo does deal an unexpectedly large amount of damage back. Despite this, I stay in, and since Flamigo can't outspeed us, Iron Maiden is able to wrap up this battle with a Gigaton Hammer. With Larry's defeat, we've conquered the third member of the Elite Four, meaning it's just hassle left. The Dragon-type Master leads with his Noivern. In return, I send Slipknot into action, using Make It Rain to make quick work of Noivern. 
Haxorus is Hessel's next choice, and I switched to Pantera in response. Haxorus, despite its massive attack stat, struggles to harm us significantly. Kowtow Cleave delivers substantial damage, and the Rocky Helmet we've equipped Pantera with deals enough damage to finish off Haxorus. Next is Flapple, but this little apple is no match for Pantera's knives, as a single X scissor slices it into pieces. Finally, Hassel sends out his ace, Braxcalibur. I return Pantera to his Pokeball and send out Slipknot instead, predicting a Brick Break. Even after terrestrializing, Braxcalibur deals pathetic damage to us. On the other hand, using Make It Rain, we're able to deal enough damage to take out Hassel's ace. And with Hassel defeated, we've cleared the Elite Four. On to the champion. Gita does have a few Pokemon that could cause us some issues, so I decide to play my go-to lead and send out Metallica against her lead, Espathra. Espathra's attacks barely graze us, granting us the opportunity to set up light screen and reflect. My next move is to send out Pantera into battle, and with a single Kowtow Cleave, Espathra is done for. Gita's Avalug steps up as her next Pokemon. With enormous defense, this thing could be trouble, but an Iron Head from Pantera dishes out some major damage. It's not quite enough though, as we suffer the consequences of a quad effective body press, causing significant damage to Pantera. Thankfully, we outpace Avalog on the next turn, delivering the final blow. Go Goat is up next, and Pantera uses a super effective Excisor, which deals okay damage, though I did expect more. I decide to sub Pantera for Megadeth, and on the next turn, a super effective Drill Peck does the trick. Gita then sends out her own King Gambit, and so I respond by using U-Turn to switch into Slayer. With a single Brick Break, Slayer makes quick work of King Gambit. Gita's next choice is Veluza, and I opt to switch to Iron Maiden. Using Skitter Smack, we deal a decent chunk of damage, though at this point, both Reflect and Light Screen have worn off, so I switch to Metallica to set up Reflect again. With Reflect in place, I send out Megadeth, who absorbs Veluza's attack with ease. A super effective U-turn deals good damage before switching out Megadeth for Slipknot, who's able to finish the job. Finally, Gita is left with her last Pokemon, Glamora. Despite a super effective Earth Power, Slipknot tanks the hit well. We retaliate with a devastating Make It Rain, bringing down Gita's final Pokemon. Just like that, we've defeated the champion, but we are not quite done yet. Now that we're champion, Nimona wants a piece of us. It's time to end you for good, you murderous filth. She sends out her Lycanroc as usual, and in response, we lead with Metallica. I waste no time setting up Reflect and Light Screen. Next, we use Gyro Ball to deal super effective damage to Lycanroc. In response, Nimona has the audacity to claim that she's taught this. Do not cite the deep magic to me, witch. I was there when it was written. One more Gyro Ball and Lycanroc is out of the battle. Nimona's Orthworm is out next. We switch to Slayer, and Orthworm's Earthquake barely tickles us. With a single superpower, we quickly put an end to Orthworm. Palmot's next, and considering our Assault Vest equipped Slayer and the still active Reflect, I decide to stay in. This proves to be a grave mistake, as Palmot lands a devastating close combat, taking out our dear teammate and friend. Slayer. Once again, the devil herself claims the life of one of our Pokemon. Determined to send her to the depths of hell for her actions, I send out Iron Maiden. A single player up obliterates her Palmot. Out next is Dedunsparce. I stay in with Iron Maiden, and Gigaton Hammer manages to take roughly half of Dedunsparce's health. We use Protect to regain some health through leftovers, and on the next turn, we take down Dedunsparce with another Gigaton Hammer. Now, Nimona sends out her Gudra. I press play rough, but unfortunately, it misses. Thankfully, Gudra's retaliation isn't too harsh, and after another protect, we deal significant damage back with play rough. For some 
stupid reason, I use play rough here. And even though it's supposedly a 90% accurate move, I swear it is not. Because once again, we miss. I guess the old Pokemon rule, if it's not 100% accurate, it's 0% accurate still applies in Gen 9. Having learned from my previous mistake, I now use Gigaton Hammer to finish the job. Nimona is now down to her ace, and it is none other than the godforsaken duck. She terrestrializes it as I pivot into Pantera, anticipating Quaquaval's Brick Break. This allows for a damage-free switch into Slipknot on the next turn. Aqua Step from Quaquaval hits us hard, but because we've equipped Slipknot with an Absorb Bulb, our special attack gets a boost. With that, we only need a single Thunderbolt to send Quaquaval to the Shadow Realm, and Nimona with it. Yeah! Suck it, bitch! Next up, we're against Director Clavel, and while most of his team is super easy, barely an inconvenience, he does have one major hurdle, his terrestrialized Skeletor. Still having lots of health left, I stay in with Pantera and deal major damage with Kowtow Cleave. Unfortunately, a Terra-boosted Torch Song does even more damage, as it takes out Pantera, one of our best team members. Rest in peace, dear friend. As if that weren't enough, Skeledurge's special attack stat also gets boosted. I have no choice but to send in Metallica, who thanks to Heatproof can tank a Torch Song. Unfortunately, a Zed Headbutt is not enough to take down Skeletor, forcing a switch into Iron Maiden. And surprisingly, she manages to weather an Earth Power from Skeletor. Having the speed advantage, I now have to place my faith in Play Rough hoping that it connects, and to my relief, it does. That could have ended far worse than it did. Now it's time to face Penny, the head of Team Star. I'm told this battle is easy, and I don't have to worry about it too much. So I go into this without thinking too much about it. Penny kicks things off by sending out her Umbreon, and in response, I lead with Iron Maiden. Using Play Rough, we can take out the Umbreon fairly easily. Next, Penny sends out her Flareon, so I decide to bring out Metallica due to its heatproof ability. Flareon packs a punch with Flare Blitz, dealing significant damage, and even managing to leave Metallica with a burn. On the next turn, I realize I've made a mistake, as Flareon connects with a Fire Spin, meaning we're trapped and cannot switch Metallica out. Because of this, I'm forced to watch in agony as one of my longtime companions in this journey slowly goes down. Another brave team member sadly dies. In response, I send out Iron Maiden once more to finish off the pesky Flareon. Penny's Vaporeon is her next choice, prompting me to switch to Judas Priest. We deal respectable damage with Volt Switch before making a switch back to Iron Maiden. We take care of Vaporeon with ease, and Penny's Jolteon and Leafeon suffer a similar fate, bringing her down to her last Pokemon. Sylveon. To counter Sylveon, I send in Motorhead, who with a single Iron Head finishes off Sylveon and wins us the battle. After losing a teammate this late in the game, I have no other choice but to go back to school. Ah yes, the feature everybody has been begging for. To get back from a long, grueling day of school just to boot up your Switch and go to school. Exactly what I've always wanted to do. But hey, even the strongest trainers have to do their homework, right? So after sitting through a bunch of classes and making it through the grind, I finally unlocked the ability to speak with Pokemon. And as a reward for my hard work, the teacher gives me a Galarian Meowth that I named Led Zeppelin. Before we face Arvin, I made sure to evolve Led Zeppelin into a Berserker. Not the steel type we deserve, but definitely the one we need right now. And with that, we take on Arvin, who leads with a Greedent. I respond by sending out Led Zeppelin. We land a powerful close combat that easily takes down the Greedent. Arvin's next choice is Scovillain, and to counter it, I switch and Megadeth. A potentially devastating Fire Blast narrowly misses, granting us a lucky break. Megadeth retaliates with a single Drill Pack, easily dispatching Scovillain. Next in Arvin's lineup is Garganical. I opt to use U-Turn to switch Megadeth out for Slipknot. With just a single Make It Rain, Slipknot is able to take down the Garganical. Toadscroll is up next 
next, and I bring Megadeth back into the fray. Megadeth falls asleep due to a spore attack from Toad Scroll, which is a momentary setback for us. But I decide to stay in and wait for Megadeth to wake up, since Toad Scroll poses little threat to us. Once Megadeth finally snaps out of it, a single drill peck is enough to finish off Toad Scroll. Arvin's Cloister comes out, and Megadeth gets to stay in. We slowly wear down Cloister with a couple Steel Wings, but I decide to switch in Judas Priest to end things a bit faster with Thunderbolt. Armin's ace, Mabastiff, finally comes out. Mabastiff lands a devastating Fire Fang, but Judas Priest hangs on and counters with a Volt Switch, swapping places with Led Zeppelin. Finally, Led Zeppelin delivers a super effective close combat, securing our victory against Arvin. And we have just one more hurdle ahead of us, a battle against AI Sada and her team of incredibly powerful Paradox Pokemon. Sada initiates the battle with her Slither Wing, and I respond by sending in Slipknot. With a psychic attack, Slipknot inflicts significant damage, and on the next turn, we manage to take down the Slitherwing without sustaining much harm. Next in Sada's lineup is Brute Bonnet, prompting me to switch to Megadeth. Our drill peck does about half of Brute Bonnet's health, and with another drill peck on the following turn, we eliminate Brute Bonnet. Now Sada sends out Fluttermane. Megadeth remains in the fight, but we do get outpaced by Fluttermane, who lands a devastating thunderbolt, tragically claiming the life of Megadeth. It's a sad moment, but we must press on. In response, I send out Motorhead, who gets revenge for us by taking down Fluttermane with a single Iron Head. Sada's next choice is Sandy Shocks, and I realize that no matter what, I'm gonna have to take a devastating hit next. It's a tough choice, but I come to the conclusion that Judas Priest has served its purpose and would be a worthy sacrifice, even if it does break my heart a little. Sandy Shocks delivers a crushing earth power that takes Judas this priest from us in a single blow. Now that's taking one for the team. Next, I send out Slipknot, who takes a powerful Earth Power attack. Psychic deals a disappointing amount of damage, and on the next turn, I have no choice but to watch as Sandy Shocks once again obliterates another of my team members. Slipknot was definitely one of the MVPs of this run. Leave a like for Slipknot. I send in Motorhead, but a poison jab just isn't enough to kill. And just like that, Motorhead is also massacred by Sandy Shocks. This isn't looking too good. Next up, I send out Iron Maiden and use Player Rough. But as if out of spite, the RNG gods chose a horrible time to make Play Rough miss. Seriously, how is this a 90% accurate move? Iron Maiden hangs on like a champ though, delivering a final Play Rough that takes out Sandy Shocks once and for all. Next out is Screamtail, but Iron Maiden uses Gigaton Hammer, which is enough to take out Screamtail in just one hit. Finally, Sada's down to her last Pokemon. Roaring Moon. Unfortunately, Roaring Moon outpaces Iron Maiden, which means our very first companion of this journey goes down. We're left with just one Pokemon, Led Zeppelin. Using Fake Out, we manage to get in a little bit of bonus damage. On the next turn, Roaring Moon hits us with a painful earthquake, but Led Zeppelin manages to hang on. With the last of our strength, Led Zeppelin lands a super effective close combat that takes down Sada's Roaring Moon. And with that, we've won the battle and this Nuzlocke. Thanks for watching, I'm so glad to be back and I can't wait to show you guys some of the stuff I've been cooking up, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. See ya!